Hi, today we are starting something new. We are starting a 12 uh, episode thing because Produce X 101 has begun. So hello everyone, welcome to my video, or, or, or my channel, or whatever. But today, we're, we're seriously doing a brand new series. We're going to be doing a review on the new episode of Produce X 101 each time it comes out. So once a week, we'll have a video like this because, I mean, I really like this show. Like, from the first episode, oh my god, I loved it to pieces. So we start off with this opening, and it's like a, a, an Imagine Dragons song, like the instrumental to it. I forgot what song it is from Imagine Dragons, but it's like the one where it's like heavy bass and like cool drums and just everything. And then we got a blacksmith making an X with stuff. And it's just such an epic intro to the series. I love the intro so much. Like they just make them so awesome. And then we're hearing um, the host. His voice, which is Lee Dong Wook, if I remember. And like his narration of just everything, it just makes it sound even cooler. And holy crap, uh, I, I, I'm already liking this season um, just from this intro. And like the narration is about going through with your dreams, following your dreams, and that stuff, which is good. We should all do it, and that's what I'm doing as well. So follow through with your dreams, guys. Then after that awesome introduction, uh, we see Lee Dong Wook for the first time, and uh, oh man, he is looking fly like a um badass. There we go. And then what happens is the camera's zooming in on Lee Dong Wook, and then after that we get a close up of him, because that's what happens when you zoom up into someone. And then after afterwards, it starts to zoom out, and all of the contestants for Produce X 101 or around him and I'm not gonna lie that was pretty awesome and then we get to the freaking uh, voting system which is like the same as last year and the year before so it's it's like and, and the year before that so it's like it's it's normal it's a normal system and I mean I like it it's, you know, I, I can't vote so you know and then after the voting system we see a time-lapse of the place getting built and I'm not gonna lie I like it and and like the seating area looks sick and that number one seat oh it looks beautiful and the first set of trainees that come in are Woolen Entertainment and I'm not gonna lie Woolen Entertainment they got high hopes they, they they've been slaying it with quite a lot of the seasons, so that's probably why they were the first people, because most people were probably most hyped about them. God damn. And they're like, oh, I just want to sit on that first place seat. And then they go up and... Oh, wait. They go up and do they do it or do they not do it? I forgot. I like If I was in these shoes, I would sit on that seat. Because like you were the first ones in there, you guys might as well experience it. Actually, I think I did. I, I mean, I think they did, not me. But I could have. Who knows? I might be a contestant in Produce X 101. And then after that, we get Maru Entertainment or Maru Entertainment, however you pronounce it. And they're the ones that had Park Ji Hoon in it. I don't know, man. But I cracked up laughing uh, with one of the guys who tried to do some one on one eye contact battle with the viewers. And he failed instantly. And I laughed at that because it was cute and funny. So, like. <laughs> Let's do it. I can't do it, I can't do it, I just can't do it, man, it's just hard, I'm like, my eyes just need a blink. Ah, oh. I don't understand how people could do it for like two minutes, one minute, three minutes, you know, like, it's, how? So then more boys are coming out and like, you know, we're getting more seats, and then finally, someone decides to sit on that freaking seat, and I am, like, amazed on, like, the effects that they did, the, the stairs were lighting up. They were lighting up, like the stairs were legit lighting up. How epic is that? Extremely epic. And and I was like, dude, those stairs have accomplished more than me in my entire life. They can light up. I can't. I can't light up. I'm jealous of stairs. What the fuck? And a little bit later, um, a guy from Fantagio. Fantagio? Fantagio? Appears. And I'm like, oh, you got a lot of pressure, my guy. You got a lot of pressure on you because, uh, like, just like other seasons, Fantasio has been in the final group. And it's just one guy from Fantasio, so there's a lot of pressure on him. And then 
he went up to the first place seat, and then the first battle began. And do you want to know how they did a fight? Well, you probably watched the episode, but they did a fight by doing one hand push ups, bro. Yeah, I can't even do it, and I'll prove it to you. I'll do it with my phone, because I want to know what the recording is like on my phone, so I'll just. Uh, I'll be back in a sec. <laughs> I can't do it, man. I just can't. <laughs> to be honest, I can't even do a normal push-up. So why did I even try to do a one-hand push-up? I don't know, man. I seriously don't know. But, uh, then something sad happens. The boy? That was originally on the seat. Lost. He lost. So now there's a new number one on the seat. And I'm like, whoa! Fantasio, let's get it. And this caught me off guard. Nam Taeyon appeared on the screen with his little brother. Because his little brother is appearing on the show. He is going for the debut of Project X 101. I wonder what the group would be called. Uh, excellent. Nah, that's pretty dumb. Um, but like... I loved that moment, it was so awesome, like, their, their bond is pretty cool, and I, it, it was cool, I liked it. My phone's ready! Yay! I'm back. Got some, some, just some chicken tenders, because, you know, it's a good snack. So yeah, I fight for that brothership, because it is awesome. Anyways, um... Hi. SM! Appear! What? What? It's insane! It's the first time SM is like appearing, I think, in this show! Oh, oh wait, no, it's just the modeling part, the agency part of SM. But goddamn, they got visuals! Which ain't really surprising because they're models, but goddamn! And nothing interesting really happens after that. G Friend? Whoa, what are they doing here? The G Friend's agency, oh, I forgot what it's called, but G Friend's agency, there's guys in it and they're participating. What? So yeah, the show just continues to show new people for a while and then Starship appear and I'm not gonna lie. There's high hopes for Starship because they have done extremely, extremely well in each freaking season. So I got high hopes for them, okay? Okay? So I reckon at least like one or two of them will continue on with the Starship legacy. Probably the rest of them will probably get eliminated, like, you know? And yeah, they probably get eliminated. And then afterwards we get a flood of like individual trainees, or trainers, trainees, trainees, trainees. And I was surprised once again, Sky Castle cast member participating in the show to be an idol. I forgot his name, not gonna lie. I'm not good with names. Uh, so that's why I'm just saying this guy all the time. But don't get me wrong, during the show, there will be some people that will stick with me because they've made uh, uh, an impression on me. And I'm not gonna lie, there was a guy that made a big impression on me, and I reckon he's gonna be in the final, but we'll get to that when we get to that. But anyways, was anyone expecting the Sky Castle member to participate in this? Cause I, I, I was not. Were you? Cause not me. No. Not at all. And it caught me off guard, but I'm not gonna lie. There's gonna be insane pressure on him because, I mean, Sky Castle was pretty freaking big. It was like really freaking high in, the, in, in, in Korea earlier this year. So th there's gonna be a lot of eyes on him. So good luck, my guy. Then there's another battle for the throne of number one spot. And you know what they do? They do a rap battle. Woo, 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 woo. Who will win this battle first? The boy that was on the throne or the guy that is contending? Contending? I used the right word for the throne. Our first boy, he rapped well and I liked it. He was the boy that was on the throne and he was doing good. And then the second boy, he rapped with confidence. He sat on the throne. He was like, like I could get this freaking seat and uh, he, he didn't win. So the guy that was already on the throne won. So, I mean, that was kind of, yeah, yeah. And after that, I heard something and saw something that caught me off guard. I actually choked on my popcorn. And I, I, uh, I, had, I had a bag of popcorn and I choked on it. Not on the bag, but on the actual popcorn, you know, because that would be weird if I ate a bag. Because Victon are participating on the show. Victon! I was... Uh, was anyone expecting that? Because your boy wasn't. I... I what? A what? I was... I, I heard people... Or, I mean, I saw the 
uh, what are they called? Trainees talking about it. They're like, yo, I heard Victon is on the show. And I'm like, what the fuck? And then they said, um, uh, Woosok. Is it Woosok? I'm sorry if I got your name wrong, my guy. Your name rock? Name wrong. Uh, from Uptension. He's also on the show. And I'm just like, Nani? What is this? Like, I, I was surprised when I heard those because one, I mean, Vic didn't haven't released a song in so long, but Time Full of Sorrow, Time of Sorrow is such a good song. Holy crap. It's a beautiful song. One of my favorite songs of all time. Like, I can listen to it whenever. Like, it's legit such a good song. And Up Tension, when they released Blue Rose earlier this year, holy crap, that was amazing. And like, I was so surprised seeing that you know, these two groups on this show, like, it caught me off guard. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm still kind of shocked hearing about it. I'm still shocked about hearing about it. And then after this, I choked once again, because YG is participating in this. No, not the modeling one, the actual YG. There's, I, I can't remember how many trainees uh, there, but it caught me off guard. I was like, oh, this is gonna be insane. We got people from Victon, people from Our Attention, and also My Team. Um, by the way, My Team got some amazing songs. Uh, they're also participating in it. And then, like, YG, SM, JYP. I am hands down excited for this. Like, this, like, hearing, like, after I heard about Our Attention, and Victon appearing, and then the freaking YG trainees, or trainee, appearing. I was in shock. I was in shock. I was seriously in shock, and I was like, this is gonna be it. This is gonna be my favorite season. I could already tell it's gonna be my favorite season because of the competition already, dude. So after hearing all that, I was like, hey, we fine. I'm not gonna die. I'm not gonna have a heart attack for a while. And straight after that, JYP appears. Oh, this is gonna be one insane competition. Hella insane. And then our JYP boy is walking up, 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 up the stairs. And then he fights for the throne for that first place. And he arm wrestles. I think it's with his weak arm because the guy that was on the throne said he's left handed. So the JYP boy bet him easily in an arm wrestle. And then he became the boy on the throne. And I was like, oh, god damn. And the JYP boy was the last trainee to appear. And after that, our host, Lee Dong Wook, comes down and, well, he appears. I don't know how, actually, no, he walks on, he walks on, that's how he appears. He, yeah, that's exactly how he appeared. But he appeared on the show once again in this episode because, you know, he's the host, so it's expected for him to be there. And he started talking to everyone and then he started to explain about the X in Produce 101 or Produce X 101 and I like it. So he tells us how there are 11 people debuting but there's only 10 seats and so what he's saying is that uh, the, the ranks from 1 to 10 are people debuting but the 11th rank is all about votes so it could be anyone did it could be anyone whoever has the highest amount of votes will get into that group so the person that's rank 11 is not going in the group but he's got a high chance of getting in the group if he gets the votings that's insane that's insane like imagine being rank 11 at the end of the show and then not making it in because someone else had more votes Ooh, that is gonna be good if it happens that could potentially happen and I'm not gonna lie I'm excited for it and I'm ready to die when that happens because yeah I'm a, I'm a, I'm a no about like maybe 20 trainees by that time and then we get all the trainers or mentors or judges or whatever they're called the, and I'm not gonna lie, I like them all. Uh, and since Produce X101 is to get like the best global group, they got all the best teachers from the previous um, um, seasons. And I love this lineup for the te uh, teach teachers. Yeah, we'll just say teachers. Uh, I love the lineup for them. It's insane. I really freaking like it. And then after that, we learn more about Produce X101, and it's about the grades. So the grades that you first get uh, are not A to F, it's A to D, and if you get an X rank, to be honest, when I heard the X rank, I thought that means you, you want to be in like the, you know, like above A, but no, X rank is you go home. You, you go home if you get an X rank. Now that 
is insane. Like they're already eliminating people from here. Well, to be honest, I I don't know if they are eliminated because it says that they won't be participating on the produce grounds. But maybe they'll be training at their own place or somewhere, or or maybe they're just not doing it at all. Maybe they are actually eliminated and they can't do anything. But the thing is, we were getting previews of people with X. So surely the the people that got X rank will appear in the show still, but not be eliminated, but get less screen time or or something. I don't know. I seriously do not know. It, it, it's it's like this part was confusing for me. I'm like, are they going home? Are they eliminated or not? Because they, I think they're trying to make it so it looks like that they're eliminated, but they're not. Yeah, seriously, that is freaking awesome. I love that aspect a lot like they're just making it good they're making the show real freaking good this season and i am all for it baby but anyways now we get to the stages yay i freaking loved some of these stages some of them were like maybe like three four actually quite a lot of them i liked and then there were of course the i basically uh remember all of them so almost all of them so we'll talk about that. So yeah, the first group was uh, the people from G Friends Entertainment Agency Source Music. There we go. I remembered this time. So they were the first people to 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 you know show themselves on the stage, and I was excited for them because you know uh, just hearing G Friends name within the thing got me excited. And then they started the performance. I'm like, oh yo, I'm liking this. Their dancing is freaking powerful, but then their vocals. Uh, I, I, I'm why am I? I'm sounding like a freaking teacher, but I'm not. But like their vocals were a bit shaky every now and then, and I was like, oh. But their powerful dancing was good. I like their dancing, but I don't like the the vocals that much. And then yeah, this is one of the moments where I found one of my favorite people in the show coming up next. Uh, so we had uh, so we had some trainees come onto the stage to perform Coco Bop from EXO. And um, you know, I love their charisma. Their charisma on stage was awesome. There was one guy that had a bad voice. Like he he was like getting the the notes wrong. I don't know. I I'm not a I'm not smart with this type of stuff. But I was able to tell, you know, his he wasn't singing well and all that stuff. But there was this one guy wearing white and he had awesome facial expressions. He was uh, singing well. I think he also did some raps. I'm not too sure. Um, and he was dancing well. Like, everything about him, like, you know, he was like, he, he, he was like, had a strong presence about him, you know? He had confidence. He had confidence, which was awesome. And then after the Coco Bot performance, he got asked to uh, do a dance and he uh, was confident about, you know, what he could dance to and he danced to Moeland Boom Boom. And I'm not gonna lie, that got me to be like, this guy is one of my favorites already. Like his confidence, his energy, his charisma, and it was so good. Like he was dancing well and then when, you know, they screamed, great! He did it. He was like, uh, great. And I liked it, man. I liked it. I seriously want this guy in the final group. I don't know his name, but I want him in the final group because his charisma, his energy, just everything about him was awesome. And I'm like, he's going to get an A and he got a B. He got a B. Which, I mean, fair enough. Fair enough. But I, I, I reckon he's going to show more of himself on the show and he's just going to you know, get a higher mark and or rank and be in the top 10. But I reckon that is if he keeps his personality going, you know. Uh, that's the, uh, like, if he keeps his personality the same the entire way through and, like, you know, I think he'll be in the, the final, you know. If he's always showing that energy for everyone in his group, you know, like, he, he's like the sunshine for each part or group that he's in. If he continues to do that, he'll be in the final group. I'm telling you. There's also like a couple other people that I reckon will be in the final group uh, from this episode. But uh, I mean, not gonna lie, I got maybe four or five people already that I think will be in the final group. But to be honest, you never know what happens. They could have a mistake on stage or anything like that. Like, I, I'm just like, this is just first impressions, dude. First impressions. And afterwards, Starship appear. And I had high hopes for Starship, but I'm like, oh shit, these guys are gonna slay it, they're gonna do awesome. I loved their song choice. It's it was such a good song, I loved it, but oh Starship, no. Like at the start their singing was good. 
and then it just started to go downhill fast. Like the rappers, they were mumbling the freaking words. The singers were like off point, and I was just like, yeesh. Oh no, man. This is the first time we get it. This is the first time we get the X. We got three trainees from Starship getting the X, and we got two of them uh, passing. And I think they got a B? No, they got Ds. Uh, they got like the lowest ones that you can get, a D rank. Well, X is the lowest one, but they got D ranks. So yeah, that, that caught me off guard. I was not expecting that. Um, everyone was just not expecting that. So you, she was like kind of pissed off with them. I, I mean, I, 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 I had high expectations, so that kind of ruined the mood for me. And I felt kind of sad after that. But then, then we get like a cute group coming up on stage and uh, they're, they're like brightening the mood. I'm like, oh, these guys are gonna be freaking sick. Cause you know, usually if a group appears after like a sad or a bad performance, usually the next one is usually good. Uh, but then it just cuts. They, they, you don't see them perform. It just cuts from the, like the, the group. I think they're from Maro Entertainment. I'm not too sure. Um, but it cuts from them to this guy doing lie by BTS and no. Just no, that was that was a big no. Just the sadness hit me straight away. After like that cute group we're on, like being all energetic and smiley, we got that live performance from BTS and it no, just no. But then after the live performance, it goes back to the Maru Entertainment boys and yeah. I was like, yes! Please brighten up the mood, make this an awesome moment and no, they were a complete mess. God damn it. I was not expecting that. I was kind of sad. But then after that, uh, Lee Dong Wook, who is an who is an actor, and he, he just doesn't really have that much experience with like singing and all that stuff. And he stated it. He was like, oh, like oh, I'm a bit nervous. But he he was critiquing people so well. Like we had a montage of him just critiquing people and like throwing that criticism at them. And I'm like, yo, dude, you're slaying it, dude. Oh, yeah, good job. He's got sharp eyes, like he can see what they're doing wrong and like he just hits them with it and like the other judges are like, yo, he's actually doing such a great job, what the hell? And I'm like, yeah dude, yeah dude, it's Lee Dong Wook, what do you expect my guy? So after we get all that harsh criticism, we get some happy music and I know straight away that this performance is going to be a good one. Yes. I just know it's going to be a good performance. The guy comes up, we get uh, like him talking to the people. I don't know who he's talking to, but he says he's done Taekwondo and we see some like Taekwondo moments from him and he he like he's insane. Like he uh, did he win nationals twice or something? I can't remember. But he was insane with Taekwondo and um I was like, okay, he does Taekwondo. What his dancing is going to be incredible. He he knows his body. He know he can be flexible. He can you know do a lot of stuff. He can do flips. I can't do flips. I can't do anything. I can barely whip. And I was like, yo, I'm liking this guy. You know, he's going to be good at dancing. And then oh my god, we learn he's been training for 20 days. And like I was like, yo, what the hell? I was like, and then I, my expectations went a bit low. And then I'm like, no. He does Taekwondo. He's gonna be good at dancing and everything. And he kinda of, he like kinda of motivated me with what he said. Like what he said was so motivating. He was like, yo, when I became adult, I just wanted to do what I wanted wanted to do. And he he's following through with his dream of becoming an idol and that was like uh, probably 20 days ago he, he wanted to follow through with that dream finally. And like that that motivated me because like one my dream is to entertain people on like well part of my dream is to entertain people on YouTube but my further dream is you know speaking Korean and entertaining people on national television that will be awesome like when I see the international people on Korean uh, variety shows and all that stuff it inspires me to want to do that because you know not that many people 
um, go to other countries to to entertain people because you know it's a different culture, it's a different language, everything's different. And when I see people do that, it inspires me. You know, that's what I want to do. But it's just hard studying Korean by myself. Not gonna lie. So yeah, this guy inspired me. You know, he he motivated me more. To follow through with my dream you know just do what you want to do that's basically what he said and i from him saying that like just as the way he fought of everything it got me to like him i reckon this guy will make it into the final group seriously just like i like this was all before he performed and now we're getting to his performance and yo what the flips dude I liked it a lot like like no one was expecting it no one is, was expecting it he was on heelys dude he was like mm, going across the stage what oh what I was not expecting that you were not expecting that no one was expecting that and now I want a pair of heelys I want to be able to just slide across the ground like that you know I reckon they'll be cool and I'm not gonna lie he is doing extremely well for a guy that is only trained for 20 days like his, his voice is good his dancing is good because of Taekwondo he knows how to use his body and like he, like I think he's doing extremely well and then after seeing that I'm like he will make it into the final group if he just keeps on improving keeps on practicing you know I reckon he could do it I reckon he could freaking make it into the final group and also the his mentality is awesome I think his mentality would be awesome for a group so yeah after that performance um one of the judges is like you know, you're dancing in Hades. Do you have any other dances, dan dance moves or a dance that you can do? And what he does is pretty cute. He, he knows, he's like, ah, oh, you know, I haven't trained for that long. But then he takes off his Hades and like slides them across the stage. What a lad. <laughs> So he starts dancing to a song, I can't remember what it is, um, and the only thing that I saw was just his passion and his potential, and I was like, oh, dude, you're moving so, so fluently, like, it was so freaking awesome just seeing him dance, and this is after 20 days of training, what? Like, this guy has potential, like, massive potential. And then, after that, we're, we're getting his grade, and I'm like, okay, he's trained for 20 days, maybe they'll be like, okay, you know, here's a B, or here's a C. But no, he got a freaking A! He got an A! And I was like, what? And then, it cuts to him backstage, and he says another thing that gets me to, to like him more, and it's like, you know, the reason why they gave me an A is not because of my talent, it's because they want me to work harder. They want me to work harder. I'm like, oh, man. Oh, he's awesome. Just the way he thinks is just so good, dude. But yeah, uh, I don't want to talk about every performance because, I mean, it'll just, this video will be so long. It's already been, what, like, maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes. I have no idea. It's, it's, it's going to be a long-ass video, I can tell you that. But yeah, after that performance, uh, we got a new guy. Well, not a new guy. Well, he is a new guy. Um, the next performance, straight after, it was another one that I liked. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, the guy sung in English and he sounded good. Like, I was able to understand what he said. I'm like, oh, he's also got a good voice and all that stuff. And then we learn more about his past. He knows two of the trainers or teachers. Um, and he, he wanted to be an idol, but he never debuted. And then he went into acting. And now he's going for his dream to be an idol. He's trying to grab it. And I like that. I like people who... You know, like, everyone on the show is going for their dream. But, like, I don't know. I like it when people, you know, go back to go for their dream that they once wanted. And also, when he was doing the performance with the English song, I can't remember what song. I'm, I'm terrible with this type of stuff. Um, but he danced so elegantly with the song, and he put on a good performance. Seriously, he put on a good performance. And then after that, the... The trainees, trainers asked him to, to sing another song and he sung a song in Korean and holy crap, his voice is beautiful. He's got a good voice. Like, I like his singing. He is good. He can dance elegantly and I thought he was going to get an A, but he got a B. So that caught me off guard. I thought I was going to be correct with all my guesses, but uh, I was wrong with that. But still, he, he was awesome. I liked him. And yeah, after the performance, he's talking about how he's following his dream, and you know what that does? That opens up a moment where it's an emotional moment. 
there we go and it's just a compilation of all these trainees saying that they want to follow through with their dream they don't know what they'll do if they don't you know debut or anything like that you know there it's like an emotional part but what makes it emotional is the soundtrack holy crap mnet have got a good soundtrack for this season the piano for the sad stuff ho 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 that puts on an emotional toll on you like if you have a good piano you can play with people's emotions dude seriously like like usually when it's like oh i'm following through with my dream and like it's kind of sad i don't really get sad but once that piano started playing dude i i was like getting emotional they got a good soundtrack for this year seriously like this is open oh, like seriously i'm if the if show's got a good soundtrack i'm in for it and mnet got a good soundtrack for you know this season but yeah, after the emotional state of everyone saying they want to follow through with their dreams, we get a guy from season two, and I remember him. I like as soon as I saw him, I'm like, oh, that's the guy with chewing gum. Um, I mean, that's that's how I remembered him. Um, you know, he he did chewing gum in season two from NCT Dream, and uh, he he fought one of the trainers. I uh, was telling him to stop singing. And then that put, like, that, like, kind of stressed him out, and he had to sing again, and, like, he started crying, and I felt bad for him. But he started to perform, and, oh, I am going for him. I want him to be in the final group, because he has improved so freaking much. I liked it. I liked his performance, and, like, he's doing NCT Dream, and then it cuts to another song. What song was it, though? Okay, I can't remember which song it was, but he like went, he transitioned into another song. I'm pretty sure, and it was a dance, it was a dance break song, you know. And like he has improved so much, like his dancing was so good. He's got so much confidence now, and I loved it. I'm like, okay, he he he's improved so much. Give him a B, and he got a B, and I was so happy about that. Wait, did he get a B? I think he got a B, but let's just say he got a B because that's what I remember so he got a b and i was so happy because like he got an f last time so he's improved a lot like from an f to a b i like that i like that a lot i respect that i respect that he's still following through with his dream he's gained more confidence after all, of, all what happened in produce uh season two and i like him i want him to be in the final group so right now i got three people that i want in the final group oh, oh why did i have to remember Oh no, after this guy's performance, we get a guy doing Son Me Siren. And that was cringy. That was cringy and creepy because he was always smiling and like when he was on the ground and then like looked up, he was smiling like this. And I was like, day. That was kind of creepy, not gonna lie. Um, and it was just cringy for me. Like, I, like, good on him for having confidence and following through. But it was just a cringy, um, you know stage for me and i was like he's surely gonna get an x and he got an x uh but that that stage man it was cringy i like his smile though except for the you know that one like, like when he's normally smiling and he's got this uh uh smile eyes actually i wonder what i'm like when i'm full on smiling what do i look like when i'm full on smiling guys um, I said I wasn't going to talk about every performance, but right now I'm talking about every performance. So the next performance, which is straight after this cringy one, was brand new music, baby! And they, they're coming on, and um, the, oh, is it the guy with red hair, uh, he's like got his mic like underneath his nose, and he's nervous, and he's breathing heavily, and, and, and all that stuff. And I find, find it funny. Like, it's just, uh, I mean, it's just like a cute, funny thing, you know, like, because I, I, uh, I don't know, I find, I find it funny. But I quite liked it. Um, you know, like he, he tried, he was like, oh, you, you know, that's me, and he tried to fix it, but then you still hear him breathing. And like the, the editors, the editing in this episode has been freaking awesome. I've been liking it so, so much. I haven't seen anything wrong with the edits or anything like that, and it's cool. I like it. Like everything's been so well so far, and um, but I, I just love it when they make awkward silence because, like, you know, it was, it was just. Him breathing through the mic and like for maybe 10 to 20 seconds it's just like cutting to each person it's cutting to the trainers and it's just him breathing heavily and then I think it's uh, the host Lee Dong Wook uh, he's like uh, who's who's the one breathing and it was funny it was just a cute funny moment um, and then brand new music they're, they're you know they're saying 
oh, we produced our own song. And I'm like, oh, is this going to be the next Welcome to Our Hollywood? <gasps> Seriously, is it Welcome to Our or My? Whatever the, the title of that song is from season two from the brand new music trainees. It was awesome! Welcome to my Hollywood, that's what it is. I want that to be an AB6's debut album, please. So anyways, let's talk about the stage. Or the backstage, because it went, it went to them being backstage before. Uh, they were pretty nervous, and what they were doing were just push-ups. I don't know why people do push-ups when they're nervous, but they were doing push-ups. But now we get to the actual stage! Just kidding, it cuts to another freaking group. So there's two other groups that did self-composed songs, and I'm not gonna lie, they were freaking epic, so it cuts to them uh, uh, just before Brand New Music were about to perform their one, and they were good, they were good, like, it, it, like the self-composed composed songs from everyone was freaking good, I liked them. Um, the first one with Bloom, uh, I liked the instrumentals, I can't remember what the second one was called, but they had good vocals with the their song, and then it goes back to Brand New Music, and we get the full, basically the full freaking stage for it, and... I like it. I like the song. They nailed it. Like the vocals were good. Uh, the dancing were good. The expressions were good. Uh, the beat was good. Um, just like, like it was such a good self-produced song. Just like what Lee Dawi had, um, or Dawi had when he was on season uh, two with Welcome to My Hollywood. Like it was just such a good self-composed song, and I, I, I'm loving it. You know, everything's going well, but then. But then, the one of the guys sings a freaking beautiful high note, and I'm like, yo, that's so refreshing. Like, it was such a good high note. And I was like, yo, brand brand new music is more like brand, brand new music, am I right? Got him. And I was like, okay, maybe three people are going to get A's, one person will get a B. That's what I was thinking, just like from seeing the performance. And I was I was pretty close. Um, two of the members got A's and two of the members got B's. So so I was pretty close to that guess. And I'm not gonna lie, like, I was happy with that. Like brand new music, man. They're a force to be reckoned with. And now we're getting to MBK. And I remember MBK from another survival show. And I saw one of the members from MBK um, that it, that was on a survival show participate in this one, but the other two didn't participate in a survival show if I remember correctly um so yeah one of the the MBK members like I was like oh you know he was doing pretty well on that survival show I can't remember if he actually made it to the debut group or not because I forgot but yeah when they were on stage their vibes were so freaking nice and that rapper from MBK oh he is a good rapper a really good rapper but yeah so yeah they they were uh oh, what song were they performing for first they were they were performing like kind of a, a fun song and then they transitioned to boomerang from freaking 101 and it was awesome it was such a good stage from MBK I liked it and the rapper was the one that stood out for me the most and I think that's who stood out the most for everyone like that was watching at, on like on that episode like the trainees trainers were like uh oh that rapper he's good you know and i i think the rapper will make it into the final 11 uh he will probably be in the group because his rapping is, is just good he's a good rapper and then we learned some more about him and he's only been a trainee for three months but he's he's got a lot of freaking potential dude like the rapper man he is insane like when they were performing his like ear thing like fell out and he he handled that perfectly apparently uh, apparently um this is what the judges said uh, he didn't get flustered or anything like that he just like he did it so naturally and that that's pretty impressive not gonna lie that is pretty impressive and then our rapper he got an a which was awesome dad he got a freaking a and then the guy that was on the other survival show who i had high expectations for he got a c so yeah then we get to the next stage. So yeah, uh, after that stage, uh, we got some guys singing in backstage beautifully, by the way, beautifully. And we learned that the, uh, I'm not sure if both of them are from my team, but one of them is from my team for, for sure. And his voice is beautiful. Holy crap. Well, both of their voices were beautiful. Not gonna lie, like they, they were freaking awesome. Like, and while well, they were doing that backstage and they got told to be quiet, which was funny. And then they got onto the stage, and they, oh, 
Oh, they were awesome. Like their vocals were insane, and then it switches to like a dance song, and their dancing was insane. And I'm like, can these guys be in the final group, please, please? Now we're getting to the Sky Castle actor. He is gonna perform. Oh wait, no, the episode ends. God damn it. So yeah, uh, the episode ends, and I love it. This is by far my favorite season already, and it's uh, only episode one. I am excited for this. I love everything about it. I loved the camera work. I love the the set design. I love the the host. I love the judges. I love the trainees' personalities. I love the performances. Um, I love the like you know um, the soundtrack. I'm loving the self-composed songs that people have already done. I'm loving everyone's talent. You know, I'm just loving everything, dude. The editing as well, the lighting, just everything so far is going extremely well and it's only the first episode and I love it. And uh, yeah, next time I do one of these videos, I will make sure I am not like a few days late. Um, well, yeah, I'll try not be late with the when episode 2 comes out, maybe like a day or two and I'll have a review for episode 2. So subscribe if you guys are excited for this. Um, so yeah. Thank you all for watching. I hope you guys have a great day and just be yourself. Peace.